Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video and today's video is gonna be a little different. So the Origin series are happening right now and here you can see the semi-finals, which is um, Game Lord against Team Queso. So I wanna, this is an insane game because it's a best of five and this is the fifth game. It's two versus two and let me tell you how this all happened. So Team Queso won the first two games pretty convincingly, convincingly right? They won the first two games, Team Queso, which is the red side, and then Game Lord made a comeback. Game Lord won the, the last two games, and this is the third game. So, ooh, we're gonna be analyzing this game, guys. And this is actually my first time seeing the game. I know what the result is gonna be, but it's still my first time seeing the actual game. So, I'm gonna analyze the game, talk about it a little bit with you guys uh, while we watch. So, the first thing we immediately see is the Rakan in the top lane. Look at this Rakan and Desai in the top lane, and they dive the Fiora. So this is a thing that we've seen more during the tournament, which is lane swaps. You know, the, these teams like to do lane swaps. However, as you can see, it really didn't do anything for them in, at this moment, because you saw that the Fiora can just use her first ability to jump over the ball. So perhaps this was a bit wasted, because as you can see, Team Queso is going to be losing some gold in that bot lane. Like, take a look at the map, guys. You can see that um, uh, Game Lord, which is the blue team, is pushing all lanes. And Team Queso has no no one at the bottom side of the map. You can see that the Darius is moving there right now. But the thing is, Darius is going to lose farm from that. Like, he lost minions from the third. He, look at this. Like, T Game Lord are applying so much pressure to Team Queso right now. And you can already see that, you know, th they're doing really well here. And both teams are invading the jungles as well like just look at this aggressive play from both sides it's incredible really like if you look at the other side of the map kazix was trying to invade unfortunately he didn't get anything out of it but just everywhere we can see clear aggression however the blue side is coming on top game lord is coming on top and you'll like to see it at the gold advantage because um in the top side of the map there is a huge red wave built up so they're going to take a lot of gold from that. And in the bot side of the map, they're pushing the waves under the turret and the Darius is losing gold as well. So you are going to see a slight advantage to the to the blue side, which is Game Lord. Like as you can see here, there's, there's, oh, they're applying a lot of pressure. They're not allowing random to farm. Look at this. Yeah, there it is. So they actually, actually Team Kesa did a really good job here. Even though they kind of abandoned the Darius. Um, to compensate for that, they applied a lot of pressure on random. And the thing about random is this is pretty much the best player from Game Lord. So it's really good from Team Queso to hard focus random. But you can still see that they are behind a little bit of gold, but it's nothing significant because to trade off with that gold, uh, the gold deficit, they actually made random, uh, like random has no gold right now. He's level three. Look at this, like look at his level. He's level three. So they really... Um, um, they made sure to target random and make sure he doesn't get ahead in the game. Like, as I said, they are behind like four or five hundred gold, but it's pr probably worth it because, as I said, random is an absolute beast. You really don't want this guy to get ahead in the game. And I just find it crazy how these teams are playing because obviously this is much different from the solo queue games. You can see that the supports are just rotating all around the map. They, they're they rotating, um, in this case, they're rotating both to the top side to apply pressure on that top side of the map. But I just find it so crazy how, like you'll see this in every game during the Origin series, supports don't stick to the Dragon Lane. I, I actually really like seeing this because this really changes the game. This really changes the way that, that they're playing. Because right now you can see, because of all the pressure, Random is at a low level and he's not gonna be able to solo carry these team fights early on. He's not because of the pressure, but um, the cost of it is, of course, the rest of the map. It's like they, they're trading it off. They're really targeting this player. The dragons are spawning. The rift heralds are spawning. As I said, I haven't watched this game. So I'm really curious, curious what they're going to do about it. So my observation is that the blue side has a better late game comp than the red side. Um, if I was on the blue side right now, honestly, I would probably be thinking about the rift herald. But... Um, yeah, about Rift Herald, because you have that Orianna, you have the Ezreal, you have the Fiora who doesn't have a lot of gold. So, you know, it, it's not going to be the best idea to take team fights this early on in the game. But you can see, actually, they teleported home maybe a bit too early. Because the red side, Team Queso, is taking that free Rift Herald right here. They're trading Rift Herald and giving uh, Game Lords the, the, the 
What is that dragon called? The Cloud Dragon. Now, the Cloud Dragon is arguably the worst dragon in the game after the nerf, because, you know, uh, it only gives you like 6% and 12%. They nerfed it from 15%, so trading that Rift Herald for it, and they are going to take that topside turret, and they're not even going to use the Rift Herald. As you can see, they're not even going to use the Rift Herald. They are going to get an advantage out of this. They're definitely going to get a huge advantage out of this. So take a look at the gold, 15.3k, and boom, 16.3k. However, they lost a turret for it as well. They do have the Rift Herald though. You know, they still do have the Rift Herald, but you know, it's it's perhaps a bit questionable why they would just give the dragon because it like by the looks of it, they should win team fights right now. They have that Rakan with the ultimate, they have the Galio combo with Rakan. They just have an absolutely amazing team fighting comp, and they chose to not team fight. I'm talking about Team Queso, by the way, which I find perhaps a bit questionable because as I said, they should be able to easily win team fight against Game Lords, who has who has a really strong late game composition, and they could have won the team fight and gotten the dragon. <clears throat> Like you can see that Game Lord is actually ahead because of that. So even though it's it looked like a decent idea to do Rift Herald, it was actually it was not. It really wasn't. And um, they're like as I said, they're not behind. But you have to look at the compositions here. It, it's kind of an L that they're not behind. Because as I said, the blue side, which is Game Lord, has a better late game composition than the red side. They have so much poke damage. They have they just have so much damage. They have that Ezreal and they have that Orianna, which is really scary for the composition of Team Queso, guys. Let's see what's gonna happen now. It's I really like how these teams stick together so much because as you can see, no one is on the top side of the map. Um, and the reason that they're doing this is because they want to apply pressure in the mid lane, I would guess. But you have to look at it another way because if no one is at the top lane, it means that they're losing gold and experience. So again, they're trading gold and experience for map pressure. They want to apply pressure on the enemy and you know, it's, it's, it's all mind games with these games really. Like it's all mind games. Where is everyone going to rotate? When are people going to invade? What objectives are they going to do? It's really all about the mind games. This is not like solo queue where you just have to outplay your enemy. This is about mind games. You have to do things that the enemy doesn't expect at all. That is how you win these games. Like, look, here, the, this was just a huge mistake by Team Queso, to be honest. But, but, there is a but. Their team was ready for backup. So even though it may look, may have looked like a mistake, they were ready to back up. They had the mind games. They were like, okay, we can't get ganked, but we have backup. Two of them were waiting really closely. And that was the only reason why Galio and Zaya were actually that far up. Like now the Galio sh should be a bit more passive as you can see he is like he's, he's playing a bit more back because now he knows that his team is all the way in the mid lane and that he could get ganked so you can see that the Galio on the minimap is playing it a bit more passive so I really like watching these games because as I said it's all about the mind games and another thing I want to point out guys look at Fiora random he's at level 9 do you guys remember the early game when he was at level 3, when everyone else was at level 5? Look at what he's doing. He basically cleared the entire jungle, he cleared the entire wave, he just, he was basically power farming while everything was happening, and Darius was just chilling, you know, he was not farming as much. And now you can see that Random actually has 5.6k gold, which is 700 more gold than the Darius, who had perhaps a bit of an easier game than uh, Fiora. So I really, really well played by the Fiora, and Game Lord is just taking this game safely. Honestly, they have the dragon, they have the gold advantage. This is looking good for them. Like this is looking pretty good for them because, as I said, if they can skill very well into that late game, they should be able to get an advantage in these team fights. Um, now the only thing that Team Queso does have, however, is uh, like the way that they can win team fights. Let me tell you about it. So they have Rakan, and in combination with Rakan, they have the Galio. So the way that they want to initiate fights is use the Rakan ultimate, engage, knock up the enemies with the second ability, and while Rakan is in the middle of the enemies, um, um, charming them, that's when Galio wants to ult on top of the Rakan, and that's where the massive CC comes in, guys. That's where the whole power of Team Queso's composition comes from, from that Rakan and Galio composition. But if they do not win the fight with the Galio uh, uh, Rakan composition, it should have, like... 90% of the cases, Game Lord is going to turn that fight. Because as I said, Game Lord has way more sustained damage. So if they just survive the initial burst of Team Queso, they should win the team fights. So I'm really curious how it's going to play off because Rakan and Galio is a very serious combination. And I'm sure that they'll show it to you in the late game. Um, we will see. Yeah, they're getting the Inferno here with the with the Kha'Zix. And you can see Kha'Zix takes dragons so fast and they just got it for free. 
now game lords is playing it a bit more safely because of course you know they, they want to skill into that late game and they don't want to risk dying for that dragon but just giving it like that is not the best thing that you can do of course because it's a six percent damage buff they, like they gave it for free they literally gave it for free and I, I don't really like seeing that but yeah it is what it is oh fiora against darius darius hits a perfect first ability oh they were scared right there you see that you can clearly see that these guys are scared of random that galio ultimate was like man i'm just gonna help you boom and he ulted him you can clearly see that they're scared of this player guys and i get it i mean this guy is literally the number one player in the eu leaderboard so makes sense right and um yeah so what's happening now the gold advantage is 2000 no, 1,500 gold for uh, Game Lords. Of course, you know, the, um, uh, Team Queso has the Infernal Dragon, but still, Game Lords is looking fine. But damn, that Galio damage though. Wow, that's crazy. But game, as I said, Game Lords is fine as long as they don't, as long as they just don't lose a lot of objectives. That's all they have to do. Just don't lose a lot of objectives and win those. And in the look at this. Oh my God. Look at that damage. You can clearly see that the composition is already getting online. It's already getting online. All they have to do is survive that initial burst of damage of the uh, uh, Rakan and the Galio. And then, of course, they only have one more problem, which is the Darius. Now, the Darius of Team Queso, you, you guys know how Darius works, right? He's going in, by the way. The Kha'Zix is going in. Look at that damage. However, Game Lords perfectly countered that Kha'Zix because Orianna and Brahm stayed next to each other. So they didn't allow the Kha'Zix to get that uh, isolated damage, which is really, really nice. That's how you deny damage from Kha'Zix. Really well played by Game Lords right there. But what I was saying is, if that if the all-in doesn't work by the Galio and uh, uh, Rakan, there is only one other way that they could win the fight, which is the Darius. If the Darius can get his passive up, uh, and get some kills with the ultimate potentially Darius can solo carry fights but of course that's not easy to do especially against an Ezreal or something like a Fiora or a Lee Sin even they can all just kick you away they can all run away they have a lot of mobility so it's going to be really hard for the Darius to be effective in teamfights he's going to have to position really well and really do like do do a good job on the Darius so Kha'Zix is just looking for ganks as you can see he's waiting in that bush but I don't know man it's it's oh he goes in with the ultimate oh you can see that's the initial burst see that that was like that's the power of team queso they have a lot of burst damage but as i said after that initial burst that's where they lose if they do not get those skills in the initial burst and uh, that as i said there's only one way that they don't lose is the darius and if darius is not around they just straight up lose the fight because oriana and Ezreal, they're gonna do continuous damage they don't rely on burst so i'm really curious how the fights are gonna play out between these teams it's really really nice to see honestly oh the the Brahm has random its omen which is actually really nice against the darius and uh, uh, uh zaya because it reduces their attack speed it's really really good like he's not gonna allow darius to stack up as fast it's nice by the way excandro is casting which is so nice to see like excandro is a good friend of mine and also another wild rift youtuber it's so amazing to see like someone like him cast the games and it's also so nice he has such a nice voice such good casting it's so fun to watch honestly oh let's take a look at this so the next dragon is spawning all teams are obviously going to contest this dragon um okay i'm really curious how this oh the galio poke look at this so they're they're, they're kind of countering the poke of game lord with the galio poke which i really like actually his first ability deals so much damage like look at this boom he's trying to hit that poke and the next dragon is actually really important even though a lot of people say that the ocean dragon is the worst dragon in a game like this it is not because with the ocean dragon um, um, um like let's say the blue side gets the ocean dragon the, the Orianna and the Ezreal are going to continuously heal up during teamfights and when they poke the enemy. So this is a really bad dragon to give to Game Lords. Really, really bad. Let's see what's going to happen. Oh, and they did get it. What's happening in the fight? They did, oh, the Darius. Look at the Darius. Look at the Darius. Look at the Darius. This is what I mean. See that Darius? See, look at the Darius. Oh my god. Triple kill. This is what I'm talking about. And let me tell you why the Darius was able to do that. So, the blue side team, they were fully focused on the dragon. But they forgot one thing. That there is another team that wants to kill them. And then the Darius, he killed off an enemy with the ultimate that was really low. So, he immediately got his full stacks. 
What does that mean that he can just go ham on the enemy? So even though I said that it's a disaster that they, they lose this dragon, it actually isn't if they do it like this. They killed four enemies and they got the Baron. This is a moment where they can really extend their advantage. And what they have to do is buy anti heal items, which Galio did, which is really, really nice. Like, take a look at this. Look at the Darius. Boom, 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 boom. He goes on one target, which is the Brahm, and boom, he kills the Brahm, and then he just wipes off the enemy. Look at this. That's how it works. All he has to do is get his passive once, and enemies are never going to be able to kill him. Look at this. Triple kill. And the good thing is, the Darius got a lot of gold from that, so he's going to be really tanky. Like, look at his build. Black Cleaver, he has anti-healing, which, you know, he just bought that Bramble Fast um, to counter, well, I'm pretty sure he just bought it, to counter that heal from the dragon. So they, they actually desperately had to do that, because if they do not buy anti-healing, they're going to struggle during the teamfights, because the sustain is going to be really big for Game Lords. But right now, all they have to do is just get as many turrets as possible. And as you can see, they're pushing three lanes, which I really, really like. However, there is only one risk to it, which is this. One lane might get collapsed upon, which might happen here, but actually, Game Lords goes back to the mid lane because they know that the Rakan and the Zaya are otherwise going to take a turret. So this is big pressure from Team Kaso. Big, big, big pressure. They got a mid lane turret. They're going to get a bot lane turret. Darius is pushing a top lane turret. Like, look at how much gold they're getting here. Obviously, this is worth the dragon. Obviously, the way that Game Lords did the dragon really buried themselves in a grave. Like, they're, they're getting so behind from it. And here they try to go all in. Ooh, beautiful engage. Yeah, you can see they just win these team fights. They clearly win these team fights. But the Darius, man, look at the Darius. He's just pushing. He can't get the turret. He tries, but he can't. It's so close. This was actually such an important turret. It's kind of sad that he didn't get it. But the Darius is level. 14. Oh my god, this Darius is a problem. He just got Starox Gage as well. Darius has three and a half items, by the way, guys. Now, that guy is going to be hard to kill. That's That guy is going to be hella hard to kill. And Team Kesa actually extended their lead to 5,000 gold, which is really, really big. And as I, even though I said that Game Lords would be stronger in the late game, um, Keso doesn't even have to rely on the burst damage right now. Why? Because of the Darius. The Darius is so incredibly fat right now that they can just honestly take normal fights and still come out ahead because the Darius is so ahead in the game right now. Um, but there should still be a turning point in this game where the burst is necessary, the burst combination, you know, the Galio and the Rakan. But let's see how it's going to play out actually. I'm just really curious to how it's going to play out. Because Galio's poke damage is not as much as the Orianna and the Ezreal. That's, that's a fact. They deal more poke damage. And they also have that Ocean Dragon, so they're going to heal up as well. They just have to play the sustain game. But man, Team Keso is just completely out-rotating uh, uh, Game Lords by just pushing that Baron Lane turret like it's nothing. They just pushed it. Easy push. And the Elder Mountain Dragon is spawning. Oh, the Rakan tries to go in. And they do the Rakan-Galio combination. They did it. And as you can see, they, it's successful. The Rakan and Galio combination. Look at how much damage they're doing. They did the combination perfectly. Rakan struggled a little bit to go in. But then immediately when the Rakan was in the middle of the enemy, the Galio followed up perfectly, which is amazing. They did the combo that they had to do. And right now it's a 3 versus 5. However, they desperately have to take the fight. But no, no, no. The game is over. 30 second death timers. They just played it perfectly. They did that team fight absolutely perfectly. And now they should be able to just finish the game and go to the grand finals of the Origin Series, guys. Tomorrow, we're going to see Rix against Team Queso. And of course, I'm going to be analyzing some of the games on this YouTube channel, guys. Please give the video a like. Look at these guys. Of course, they're happy, man. <laughs> Feels good, man. Ah, oh, and these... The feeling of loss, man. The feeling of grief hurts so much. What a series, guys. What a series. He's getting ignored by his friend. Bro, give, give the man a hug. Come on. There it is. Thank you. Give the man a hug. Very, very well played, man. Very, very well played by Team Queso. I'm proud of these guys. Ah, I feel so bad for Game Lords. They were also really good. These players were also really good. They did so well on the first day. They won every single game on the first day. But unfortunately, they're not going to be advancing to the Grand Finals. But yes, this is... This is uh, it's gonna be so fun to watch tomorrow, guys. So, I just wanna see my boy Excandro. Ah, look at him, it's Excandro. Ah, so happy to see him. Oh, so exciting. 
it's so exciting but yeah that was it for the video enough excitement thank you guys so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this video and uh, yeah tomorrow is gonna be a similar video if you didn't enjoy it let me know in the comments you know i always take feedback from you guys uh, of course and uh, yeah let's make this video exactly 20 minutes for satisfying purpose and i will see you all in the next wild Earth video bye bye